Palmer is the only essential midfielder and De Bruyne is in a void. That is what we'll chimwag today in this midfielders tier list, which you can also remix and make your own version of via the link in the description. Palmer was the top FPL point scorer last season, despite not even playing for like the first eight games. He's also one of the most selected players right now, with over half of FPL players having him in their team. Why? Because he's essential. In the next episode of Bargain Hunters, we have some juicy players in here. Foden is only a bargain because he's cheaper than the likes of Palmer and Saka, only by a little bit, but he's still cheaper than them. And I feel like he's basically level with them. So if you can save any money on them and still get the same output, lovely. But it's also mainly for the fact that he's 5.5 million cheaper than Haaland, who he actually scored more points than last season as well. Eze is also a very nice price at 7 million, being the talisman penalty taker for an attacking team, who were also like one of the best teams in the league for the second half of the season since Glasner came in, so you never know, he could outscore some of the big boy midfielders. Nkunku has the potential to be a game breaker at 6.5 million, as not only is he that cheap, but he's also listed as a midfielder, despite him potentially playing up front for Chelsea this season. Brennan Johnson and Kudos are also a bargain at 6.5, as they will probably be involved in all of the goals. They're great goal-scoring wingers, and I think they'll just provide some great value with some big boy holes throughout the season. It is decent! And today's decent section is, let's be honest, a little bit more than decent, isn't it? All of these, yeah, pretty damn decent. Now, because there's so many good mids, this decent section is actually more players that are just fairly priced. So it's not like they're just decent and it's not like you shouldn't have these in your team. But yeah, they're just they're just decently priced, but still get more than decent returns. Salah has, to be fair, you know, done pretty decent in the last few years in FBL. But at 12.5 million, yeah, it's just decent for that price. Saka is only indecent as Odegaard and Havertz are cheaper but he's no means a bad option. Odegaard, you could argue, is a bargain, but you are kind of relying on those screamers for him to get goals sometimes, and it's just quite hard to predict when he's going to haul. He's going to blank in some easy fixtures and then just get a random goal against a big team. So for that, just decent for that price. Gordon and Gonacho could be very exciting for their price, but... I wouldn't put them over the likes of Palmer, Foden, and Eze. And even though they could still provide amazing value, I'm just going to put them decent for now. And Rodri is actually decent priced, even though he is 6.5 million and he's a DM, because he actually had almost 20 attacking returns last season. That's more than most teams' main goal scorer, main striker, and he's the DM. What? In before, like, no, none of us touch Rodri because we're like, nah, nah. You know, having a DM in your squad, and then all of a sudden, all of the casuals have him in, and they're like, that is decent. The not for me section, then, ah, yeah, it's just not for me. Son, 10 million, ah, yeah, not for me. Bruno at 8 million is not for me for now, as he could provide very good value and be that one main attacker for Man United that we just want to get in because they have so many good attackers. Sometimes having that one that's just always involved could be the one to go for. He could be that man. But for now, yeah, I'm just not for me for that price. Then the likes of Jota, Madison and Bowen could do very well. But in game week one, you probably aren't going to pick them over any other players. So it's not to say that you shouldn't have them. But for game week one, it's uh, not for me. Kinder and Buemo is actually in a lot more teams than like I could ever imagine for game week one. And for 7 million, yeah, he had moments last season. But I think that's just kind of clinging on to what he did do. I wouldn't choose him over some of the other big boys. And then Neto, um, I mean, if you're going to spend 6.5 million on him, you're literally just donating your FBL budget to FBL. No points, just vibes for that one. Then we get to the avoid. And oh boy, we have some big boy players here, don't we? Kevin De Bruyne is the cheapest he's been in a long time. So could be a game breaker if he's playing all the games. But he's aging. He's playing less and less minutes. And the main reason he's in avoid is... Is because he has very heavy links to Saudi right now. So if he's not in the game, if he's not in the league, then there's no point of having him. So I wouldn't put him in your draft just for now because you're just probably just going to have to get him out anyway. So no point putting him in. And also, you know, Foden at the same price, probably going to play more. Imagine saying that like a year or two ago. Wow. The likes of Diaz, Martinelli and Trossard could be extremely good value, even from game week one, if they start. But that's the problem. There's no guarantee they will start with Arsenal and Liverpool just having so many good attackers right now you just don't know who's gonna start and right from game week one you don't really want to have those players 
that you're not even sure are going to get any minutes, never mind start. I would try and avoid those players for game week one because if you have too many of them and then you get injuries and all of a sudden you are carding in game week two and like eight. Sterling and Rashford are prime FBL 2020. And to be fair, that's the last time they did anything good on a football pitch, isn't it? And at 7 million, yeah, they could come good at some point, but for now, an avoid. And then finally, a rice rice baby actually had quite a few attacking returns last season, but there's other better options in that price bracket that are just going to be more involved, even for worse teams, never mind for Arsenal. But then the fact that he's taken up an Arsenal spot where you probably want a defender, you probably want an attacker, and I would usually bet against three a triple up of a team for game week one just in case there's that one random player that does really well you can jump on him easy if you locked in with three players you locked in with a rice and you're like ah i gotta transfer out my 6.5 million mid just to get in another player mm, does not sound good to me avoid but that right there is my midfielders tier list done, which you, again, you can remix and make your own version of in the link in the description. And let me know what you think of this list and any changes you would make. Let me know on Twitter, send them to me as well, your version of this, and I'll have to see what you guys are thinking as well. But that's going to be all. Thanks for watching, and also, remember... <laughs> Don't be a cheeky scrub. Subscribe to Nathan Bacon right now. <laughs>